game one goes away at Team NT. Let's see what adjustments Kaz Esports is going to have for us here in game two. I suspect that an early Thanatos pick might not be the call this time for Kaz. It worked out great in the early game, but that 40% execute threshold in the late game, just no one is there for much more than, than a second to half a second. And if you don't execute perfectly, then it, Thanatos feels pretty useless in that scenario. Surprisingly enough, the TMNT are actually going to be the ones to ban away that Thanatos. So mm. even though it wasn't necessarily a threat for them, I'd imagine that they're almost expecting Kaz to try and take away all that sustain and healer composition that TMNT were running. And that, if anything, and right away, you can see exactly what they were going for. That Zeus pick is huge. Kaz really focusing out Osric here for TMNT and leaves open the Zeus. Though in their defense, 50 meter fly never really had any, did, did not do an excellent job of farming. I mean, yes, he's the Aphrodite. He's not going to be able to farm as well as someone like Isis, but was significantly behind basically the entire game. Going to have to do a better job of that on Zeus, who's really drafted for that early game pressure that he provides you, as well as, of course, the insane AOE damage that he provides. Geb and Susano, the selections for Kaz, going a little bit of a different way, a little bit more mid to late game oriented already. But at the same time, falling behind on an Aphrodite isn't really the worst case scenario. Considering True. that you're facing off against an Isis, you expect the Isis to snowball ahead of you and to secure a lot more farm than you early on. So I could imagine that the Zeus pick is going to be infinitely more aggressive inside yeah. that mid lane. And Alexum is not going to have as easy of an, as easy of a time securing more farm than him. Absolutely, along with the Thor and the Kabrak, and that's a lot of early game aggression that you're gonna see out of TMNT for life in that 3v3 core, though it could be Kabrakin solo, could be Kabrakin support. We'll have to wait and see exactly where TMNT wants to throw that Guardian who's been very, very prevalent early on here in season four. Hercules, Sylvanas, the bands for Kaz, and Sun Wukong and Medusa, banned away by TMNT for life. Rom, gonna be the selection here for Jaron, who, uh, who was just kind of there in that game. But that, that's kind of what Neath is, right? Yeah, I mean, at, at the same time, though, what more is there for Jaron to do at that stage of the game? Yeah. He he did his job early on. He safely farmed. He popped his ultimate whenever his team was looking for those picks or engagements. But as a Neath into that kind of composition, that's just, Difficult. you're not the shredding character in Absolute, that situation. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of room for you to play around with there. But... This round pick is interesting, especially since the Kabraken is on the table. Kabraken here, by the way, an excellent pick for TMNT, in yeah, my opinion, considering it. it's great against Poseidon. It has a ton of lockdown potential for Susano and Geb. And mm -hmm. then on top of that, when you have a ROM picking into you, if I'm Kabraken, I'm, I'm just like, hey, this Feels is... Feels good, man. Yeah, this I got is, a lot I, of people. I am ready for this, so... Well, we'll have to see how TMNT for Life are going to be able to pilot that Kabraken looks to be in the support role as Bologna locked in for that solo lane warrior, most likely for Predators, and it is going to be Mr. Turtle on this Kabraken. 50 meter fly on the Zeus like we expected and Welsh Beast on the on her. I really like this selection for him. And you were talking about how during relegations, he proved to be one of the more aggressive hunters, particularly on this on her. I think that we could really see him try and, and push an advantage in this duo lane early on. Oh, he 100% wants the advent advantageous duo lane, especially since on her is notorious for that 1v1 boxing potential early on. And it's incredibly difficult, honestly, for a ROM to deal with him in these early stages. And especially with Walsh Beast playstyle, I expect a lot of boxing mat like a lot of boxing to be coming out into that duo lane. Especially with uh, Jaron going for this short bow start. Don't see a whole lot of that usually as Predators takes a lot of damage on this right hand side. Though it looks like TMNT for Life did get the push advantage, even up against the chalk for Minos here. Talk to me about the short bow start. We usually see Boots won this selection along with Death's Toll if it's not going to be the Devourer's Gauntlets. Why do we see this uh, attack speed option? That's a safe start for Rom. It's not the most conventional start in the world, especially facing off against a more aggressive hunter such as on her. But his lane clear is since he's being left alone is going to be better than the on her early on. He's got the astral arrows. And then when you combine the fact that he already has attack speed steroid built into his kit, rushing an early Iqbal really isn't the worst option in the world. And in fact, it could actually catch Welsh Beast off guard should he opt to finish that into the Iqbal. And at, especially since Welsh Beast is opting for the transcendence route. 
Well, you see on the right-hand side, TMNT showing Kaz what they should have done in game one, invading the enemy buffs, able to get both the blue and the speed. Minos trying to steal away the, the enemy speed sneakily, but the rest of TMNT are here and they're able to secure it, and Minos is gonna fall here. This is the ultimate feels bad man moment. <laughs> Not only do you die, but they get the speed buff as well. I mean, that's just, that's brutal. The unfortunate circumstances of trying to solo invade a speed buff as Chalk and at not, level two. yeah, and not, and not really being aware of where the enemy team was on the map at that point in time. I don't think that he realized that mid lane had already safely cleared, and we're able to just rotate in and be like, "Hey, hey, buddy, what are you doing?" The the drafts from TMNT for life have been really, really excellent. That's been the the thing early on here in their first week of SCL play that I've really that I've really looked at is their drafting phase. We saw game one and how they play it as well, like giving up gold furies that most teams would not give up, understanding what they can get away with with their composition. And right now playing aggressive on this right hand side. Usually when you see chalk, you say, all right, well, they can they can have that right hand side. I'm not really worried about it, at least their own buffs. But uh, TMNT for life having none of that. Predators and Osric really taking it to the mid or the jungle solo of Kaz Esports early on. The recognition and awareness that TMNT have had with their drafts as far as their strengths and weaknesses are concerned, that is so crucial as when it comes to developing these sort of team synergy environments and the way that they're able to utilize every single part of their God's kits together it's so much cohesion and just difficulty for Kaz to really try and deal with overpowered usb is only level three as i say that he hits level four though still doesn't have that ultimate in fact he's gonna throw out the three there and he's gonna be in a lot of trouble immediately tmnt make him pay a little bit too aggressive there for the jungler he may be overpowered but zeus doesn't really care about that 50 meter fly able to pick up his second kill early on both going to the mid lane zeus I was talking about how well, that's a feel bad, feels bad man moment for Minos. Getting two kills early on is Zeus. That's a feels amazing man <laughs> moment. That's also probably the last character that Kaz want to see securing such an early lead. He's got the first blood gold in hand that he was able to pick up early on because of the chalk misfortunes. And then on top of that, the fact that Overpowered wasn't level five in that situation and was even it didn't seem like he was out of position he was right above his tower line but when you're up against like a Kabraken, that is out of position because that spacing is really all that tmnt are going to need in these team fights to just pick off the easy kill osric going up trying to steal away the blue buff once more though he does see four members here changes his focus possibly looking for the juggler and that's who exactly he'll find overpowered uses his beads and gets the geb shield from waldrum so kaz do able are able to manage to secure their blue buff and their speed buff. That's exactly what you want to see when you lose your first ones. You got to be on time for the first respawn. And Kaz does a good job of making sure those go their way. It's important to stem the bleeding in this sort of a scenario. If TMNT were able to secure both of those buffs once more, it would have been very difficult for Kaz to fight anytime soon. But because of the good timing of the team and, and good teamwork, they're able to find those buffs and maybe look to start fighting into the lead soon enough. In that duo lane, what's interesting to see as well is Welsh Beast opting to look for that boots rush as opposed to just finishing off the Transcendence, which I think is really important and largely due to the fact that Drone already has the Ifball line. He opted to finish that off into the early boxing item, and now he's going to be looking for his boots next, but it's going to be difficult for Welsh Beast to play as aggressively with that on her as he probably would have I ideally wanted to and now with that dual lane pressure not really going the way of TMNT I think that that really helps Kaz as far as securing these buffs because when you have a Geb on your side Geb is fantastic he is the yep. ultimate babysitter when it comes to the shield and the cleanses but at the same time he's got that early game issue and Mr. Turtle on a Kabraken just has so much aggression and pressure he's looking for him right now there's the wall and the wall from Thor as well and Mr. Turtle trembles the god of the earth back to where he came from first death there for the support player but I mean, you, you started talking about it, Taco, and TMNT <laughs> immediately do exactly what you said. It's difficult for Gebs to avoid those early deaths looking for him with the Kabraken. TMNT just still playing so aggressive with this composition. I just love how they put that Kabraken into the support role yeah. because it gives Mr. Turtle so much freedom. Dunk onto Overpowered. There's the damage, the stun as well, and 50 meter fly able to pick him up with that Aegis Assault, four to zero. TMNT blanking Kaz Esports early on here. 
Not a huge lead for them, 1,500 gold, but it's six and a half minutes. I don't really want to be down 1,500 gold. This Kabrakin support has been all over the place. 1-0 oh, and 3. He has literally been a part of every single kill so far on the side of TMNT. And th the fact is, you just can't really deal with a Kabrakin running straight at you. He has so much damage early on. He's tanky enough. And the setup potential that he has combined with the Zeus and the Thor, that is scary. Absolutely. And 50 meter flies done a great job with his positioning, making sure he's not in a bad spot whenever Mr. Turtle decides to play aggressive and positioning very, very far back, allowing his frontliner to do his job. And that's just absorb a lot of skills with that big body. And of course, not going for the Mark of the Vanguard, which is a little bit curious. We've seen most Kabrakens go for that, sometimes even in the support role, but it's really worked out for Mr. Turtle this game, getting the additional farm that Watcher's Gift gives him, and then really relying on that Kabraken passive to take less damage. Of course, he and everyone around him takes 5% less damage from all sources. Really, really underrated passive, I would say. When you think of best passives in the game, I don't think Kabraken necessarily comes up all that often, but he, he certainly should. And Predator's trying to be a bit of a bully in this duel lane, and... <sighs> He's actually going to lose the, speed, the blue buff for it. And he's lost a full wave here as well, though he is trying to find the kill in response. Overpowered uses his ultimate along with Minos, but Predators is still willing to fight Waldrums here. He's, he throws a shield onto Minos. Mr. Turtle as well. 50 meter fly going to be coming up soon enough, trying to make sure that that speed buff may not go the way of Kaz, but Kaz able to secure it without much of a problem. Predators there. Uh, th uh, is that the wrong play in that scenario, Taco? Because he loses a full wave in the solo lane and doesn't get the buff. But when you're ahead, I mean, can you kind of think of it as waves you're allowed to miss in that scenario? I would never want to miss a wave at these early stage points in the game. Waves are far more important than the buffs at this point in time, especially if you're already ahead. Why risk losing your lead to try and steal away an unguaranteed buff, especially considering that the jungler was there and available to help his solo laner secure it? Well, Jaron poking out Welsh Beast on the left-hand side, but doesn't have enough mana to play aggressive in that scenario, I think. Jaron's healthy, he may be able to use that ultimate. Osric's using his, gonna catch Jaron backing and sleeping a little bit. There's the double tap the wall, not enough mana to use the rolling assault, and Osric picks up an easy kill on the Hunter. In all honesty, that's one of those circumstances where Jaron probably recognized and knew that your ultimate was coming, but at that point in time, you just have to commit to the back and hope to God that your lazy back pays off and you're able to get out in time and back to base. It was just in that particular situation, Jaron couldn't find the back, and because of it, when you're already around that far up the lane, no mana, there, there's really no escape. And I love the decision to hold the beads there in that scenario, because like you mentioned, even if he uses them, no mana to roll, so you're not going to be able to get away, and uh, it's going to be difficult for you to, uh, to make sure that you don't fall in that scenario, even with that purification beads. Gold Fury, meanwhile, that's gone. Goes the way of TMNT for life. We were checking on the right-hand side, didn't even see it happening on the left, but it does go the way of TMNT again, using their zone control. We saw the Zeus ultimate, the Kabrakan ultimate, and Welsh Beast use his as well. Gold Fury goes the way of TMNT, pushing that gold lead to right underneath 3,000 gold or right around the 10 minute mark. Right as the Thor was ulting onto Jerome in that duel lane, I believe is when TMNT were trying to secure that goal fury because with the Hunter taken off the map, Kaz are already down a player. It's difficult to try and contest. And at that point in time, it's just a free objective. Lots of ultimates burned, but at the 10 minute mark, probably not that big of a deal. TMNT can just play passive and wait for the respawns. But passive's not in their name as Alexum caught out a little bit in the jungle. Nice shield from Waldrum, but it's not gonna be enough. Predators over the top with the Eagles rally secures the mid laner, 50 meter fly, gonna get dove here by Minos, but the great chain lightning into the lightning storm, 50 meter fly, pulls the detonate and Osric and he combine for two kills onto the solo and support. TMNT, 8-0 right now over Kaz. Zeus Kabraken, Zeus Kabraken, that's just, that's what's going to happen every single time. Beautiful execution by Mr. Turtle there as well. And the synergy that he had with 50 meter fly, 50 meter actually held the detonate there on the Poseidon, which really permitted him to get as much damage as possible off for Mr. Turtle to just finish off the kill. And he cleansed, Mr. Turtle took away that entire Geb shield health and protection. It, it was almost like it never even happened because of how much damage this Kabraken is outputting right now. Just look at the ward coverage right now for TMNT. They're really putting their lead to use, maybe not in the item department, 
but certainly in the vision. We see one ward on that right-hand side that just got placed down by Kaz, and that vision advantage really allowed TMNT to, to wrap around that that little island there around the right side mid harpies and make that fight happen. Minos, you got four here, buddy, and you're going to be in a lot of trouble. 50 meter fly doesn't even step up, nor look at the explosion because he's a cool guy. Another kill goes the way of the mid laner. Five, zero, and three already. Tier one tower on the right side falls. Kaz, they don't want any part of that on the right hand side. In fact, they're going to stay on the left, try and siege down the enemy tier one in the duo lane. Only Welsh Beast here to try and defend. He's doing a good job of it for now. There's the Cataclysm and the Kraken, but it's jumped over. And Welsh Beast trying to make it happen. He turns it around. 1v3 <laughs> finds two. Welsh Beast, are you kidding me? What just happened? That was sick. <laughs> that was insane. That that was preposterous. The beast, I'm running out of adjectives. The jump, the the impale. He just made Kaz look completely silly there. It doesn't even matter that Jerome got that T1. Oh, no. oh, At no. this point in time, if I am Kaz, I'm just like, dude, what the, just happened? The cojones on that man <laughs> to jump in one v three and then push Alexum back into tower with the impale. That was uh, that's one of those scenarios where in comms you're like, all right, let's just kill him. It's one v three. And then it's just silence. It, they probably haven't said a word yet. <laughs> it's probably still quiet in it's those just, comms right now. That's like, just one of those circumstances where you just want to act like it never happened. Oh, You're yeah. just like, nobody knows. We're not going to talk about it. Osric's just messing Trolling. around with Predators at this point in time because, I mean, if I'm TMNT and my Hunter's doing that and Zeus and Kabraken are doing all of this, you're chilling pretty hard right now. I, I don't think that there is... They know that this map is theirs right now. Mr. Turtle still trying to find something in the mid lane. Going to lock Alexa in, but the Kraken is there to zone away. 50 meter fly. Osric goes over the top, able to find the dunk down. But the defensive ultimate 50 meter fly really hurts the damage output underneath that tier one tower. Looks like Kaz going to be able to escape with their life, as will Osric, though just barely. Try to take the one or the 3v3 underneath the tower. But now we see Kaz starting to get a little bit more tanky. Meanwhile, Welsh Beast continues to just dominate. Able to find the solo kill up against Jaron. Easy peasy, as the kids say. This guy's pretty nuts. And the fact that so much has been done on the side of Welsh Beast. I mean, this whole game we've been focusing on the Zeus Kabraken and yep. everything that they've been synergizing and completing together. But the honor plays, that's exactly what you need coming out of your... That's why you pick on her. That's why you rush Transcendence and the Fae Talos and get the Power Spike online. He is completely dominating this duo lane. And the chins picked up here for Jaron pretty early on. We usually don't see this item until a little bit later. Uh, do, do you agree with this pickup in this scenario? Or would you rather see him wait, maybe pick up an Executioner instead? Opting for the chins is probably the better decision here. You want something that's going to have chunk potential onto the Kabraken once these team fight engagements start happening. But at this point in time, I'm just not sure how useful that's going to be considering how much he's struggling. Osric really deep right now, forced up into the ultimate just to make sure he can get out of danger. Though he lands underneath the tier one tower, gonna take a tower shot. That was inexplicable. That's the only... There's just no reason to land on the, the tier one tower except to distract the enemy team potentially from this gold fury. Lightning Storm's down. The detonate gonna secure it for TMNT. A three-man crack in there for Alexum, but it just doesn't do any damage. He's only level 11. He's using the Kraken up against a level 16 on her. Just no real damage there coming out of the mid laner. Gold Fury falls in favor of TMNT for life. Kaz did pick up their second kill of the game, but it's still right around 8,000 gold in the lead for the blue squad. Alexum gets rallied on by Predators. There's a Death of Fury through everyone as well, but it's just not enough to pick him up. In fact, Jaron's able to find the enemy solo laner. Mr. Turtle does is able to pick up Alexum finally after all that, but when you're down this much gold, a one for one's not that bad. Kaz, though, they, you could tell that they wanted to group up and look for the potential siege onto that T1 tower in the mid lane, but just not enough damage yet on their composition to be able to punish TMNT for being out of position or playing so loosely aggressive. And Jerome's really the only one impacting these team fights any sort of way because of the fact that he has that Chins online, like I was saying earlier. The Chins alongside of the Ickful is a strong pickup because there's really not much point 
rushing the Aussie at that point in time or a lifesteal item, so to say, or even the Executioner, just because the composition of TMNT is still fairly tanky. You've got the Thor. He hasn't built any defensive items yet, but at the same time, that's always a possibility. Mm -hmm. And then you have to worry about the Bologna. Yeah. And Bologna with the Disarm. And then on top of that, he's he's got the Frostbound for the health. He has the Nemean Lion. It, he's already incredibly tanky. And when you throw a Kabrakin into the mix, that just becomes incredibly difficult to deal with as a hunter. Though, and you look at uh, Mr. Turtle's build, no physical defense outside of that Mark of the Vanguard, so could definitely shred through that innate health that he has, as well as the health that he got from picking up the Wing Blade, so could really look to punish Mr. Turtle, who's gone for a pretty, uh, pretty selfish, pretty offensive build. Though when you're this far ahead, and you've had such a great early game as you've had on this Kabraken. Can certainly understand the reasoning behind uh, Mr. Turtle going for a build of this style. And Osric just letting the Chalk have his way with him, taking half of his HP. At, at the same time, I'm sure he was looking to back. And from with the, the portal up as well, yeah. it's, you know, it's not too big of a deal. Grouping here for TMNT in the mid lane. Welsh Beast uh, showing Kaz exactly what he thinks about him, and I don't blame him after that. 1v3 play we saw him make earlier on. <laughs> Tier 1 tower falls, no problem whatsoever. TMNT pushing that lead even higher now, right around uh, right around 8,000 gold still. In fact, it's actually closer to 9,000 gold at this stage in the game. There's the lock-in, finds two for Turtle. No lightning storm quite yet, because 50 fly isn't close enough. Alexum is isolated out, is the word I was looking for there, by Predators deep into his jungle. Predators able to get him very low and force him to use the Aegis. Only two ultimates left up for TMNT after that little skirmish. But they're still healthy enough, and they still just have enough base damage to really make Kaz worry about this siege happening right now. Osric finds multiple with that Anvil of Dawn underneath the Tier 2 tower. Minos hits four out of five with that Storm Call, but it's just not enough damage. And another Meditation comes through. Kaz just doesn't have enough damage to punch through how tanky everyone is right now for TMNT. And the Chain Lightning doing tons of damage into that back line. It, it's looking like a T2 for the side of TMNT. Well, Welsh Beast trying to get it, though isn't doing a whole lot of damage. Looks like about 87 in auto, but there's the pillar. Just trying to get everyone out of danger, and he will do exactly that. TMNT don't lose anybody underneath that tier 2, and Welsh Beast finds it. And this is just what you expect out of Welsh Beast. Sticks around too long. Man, I'm telling you what, if I'm going up against TMNT later this season, I am intentionally feeding Welsh Beast early. Like, I'm just throwing away two kills in the early game, and then I'm just waiting for him to play horribly in the late game because he's too busy taunting me. You, you, he's certainly feeling himself right now. I, I can't blame the guy considering that play that we saw earlier. And then on top of that, he picked up a solo kill on yeah. Verone immediately after, which certainly didn't help with the bit of an ego swing that he's had I'm for him this the game. The tactical feed, get him comfortable, <laughs> get him taunting. You know, pressing that right D-pad X, Y, as we do on the console. That's how you taunt, if you, if you weren't aware. I'm so proud you remember. Of course I remember. What do you think I did during my <laughs> pro career? Only taunted people. Jaron going to have to deal with Predators on this left-hand side. Look how much damage Predators is doing. There's the Frostbound Hammer as well. Jaron does have the Aegis, and there it is. The knockup isn't going to be there, though, from Overpowered. And Predators still trying to find the kill. Good ultimate from Jaron. Predators is all alone right now. Still trying to find the kill. Great wind siphon, though, from Overpowered. Make sure that, that Predators can't just use the Scourge. Oh, by the way, this was all a distraction. The rest of TMNT, they were at the Fire Giant, and they got it. Overpowered trying to secure the kill onto, onto excuse me, Predators was trying to kill Overpowered there. It was the other way around, and he's still going in. The Geb Shield, not enough. Osrix here. There goes Alexum. Predators finally falls. But Osric's going to be able to pick up Overpowered, I think. No, able to get away, and he may fall as well. In fact, he will to the tower <laughs> shot. Jaron, sloppy play all over the place here from both teams. But it doesn't matter if you're sloppy when you're up about 10,000 gold and had the fire giant because your team's going to be able to clean it up. No problem. There it is. 15 to 5, TMNT, 20 minutes in. About to go a little bit higher. Tier 2 tower falls. That's the last tower available on the map. TMNT just controlling Kaz Esports right now. Predators with the casual 1v4. Yeah, you know, just, just one of those things that you do. And what are you doing? Predators, what are you doing right now? Oh, just killing two people in a 2v4. The more questionable aspect of that entire engagement to me is Kaz is looking at Predators, Jerome just walking away, asking his team, somebody please help me. Yep. And the entire team, time... 
Kaz is just not even realizing, you know, we're all responding to our teammate in danger, but where is TMNT's response? No, nobody had the mentality or idea to think, you know, that might be an FG goal. I mean, sure, they can't really contest yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Can they, even if Kaz knows, can they really fight into that? I mean, you've got the zoo. I mean, Alexa and the Krakens have done nothing this game. It really, no real damage out of the mid laner. Same thing you could, can be said for the jungler for overpowered. Uh, in fact, below Alexa in terms of damage. Mr. Turtle surprisingly low on that damage chart, but has really just been there to CC the enemy team and allow characters like Predators and uh, Favorite Meter Fly to put out that damage for TMNT. I, I still would have liked to see at least one, maybe two members at, at least look at that side of the map and just clarify, are they on FG? Yes, they're on FG. And I, I mean, at least at that point in time, while a steal is unlikely, when you're this far behind already, I don't think it'd really hurt Kaz to just look for that steal because it, it, it would be the only. It's really the only way that they would have had some kind of swing in their favor to look for a comeback potential. But now with FG online, the side of TMNT, sure they lost two members with it, but does it really matter? How much do you want to bet that Mr. Turtle named his team? Just kind of occurred to me. His name is Mr. Turtle, <laughs> TMNT for life. You gotta assume it was him. Osric gonna take a decent amount of damage as he runs away from all of Kaz Esports, basically, but with that Fire Giant regen, not gonna be too worried about it. Actually, Osric doesn't have it. He was dead whenever, uh, or he died right afterwards after that dive on the Tier 2, so he's gonna hold that damage, but again, not too worried about it at this stage. Middle Phoenix, the focus here for TMNT for life. They don't have any of the waves to push up on the, on the duo or solo side, though, which is a good advantage for Kaz, because even if they lose this initial engagement underneath this tier, this middle Phoenix could go well on the left-hand side. There's the jump in from Predators and Mr. Turtle. Frenzy was popped as well. No one falling quite yet until 50 meter fly and Osric combine to find three kills. Welsh picks up his Hunter opposition as well. Minos, see you later, buddy. Four dead. TMNT has ran this game since the very beginning. We're 23 minutes in and finally, the mercy killing is about to happen. Titan is going to respond on the Predators in courtesy for Kaz Esports, but it doesn't matter. 23 minutes, 20 to 5. TMNT for life with a clean victory that had no shortage of flashy plays. Both games just TMNT heavily outdrafted and yeah. overall heavily outplayed. I agree. I mean, uh, the drafts were phenomenal both times, and they executed what their drafts did. And those were vastly different team compositions there for TMNT. Game one, it was wait, 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 wait. Okay, out heal you and call you in the late game, basically. And let's take a look at some of the replays from that performance there in game one from TMNT. Osric played very, very patient. Again, didn't lose his speed buff at all that game, I don't think. And that's really the dream is Kali. And <laughs> then just did his job in the later stage of the game. You can see this is what Kali does best. 1v5, and no problem whatsoever. Destruction really, uh, really helps you out in those kind of scenarios. Not being able to die is a nice little buff. Not to mention just the lockdown potential that Osric had. He had so much presence and control for his team. Mr. Turtle, while an obvious hero for these team fights and engagements that we saw coming through, Osric at the same time had so many secures in the back line. And that's that's dream scenario for your team. If your jungler is just getting in there, getting out, and perfectly executing everything that you would need to happen. Clean up crew. That's exactly what you want when you're playing Kali, and that's exactly what Osric did in game one, as well as the healing composition really paying off for TMNT for life. Really just an overall solid performance there in both games of this set. We have some, uh, I want to see some game two replays if we have them, specifically <laughs> Welsh Beast with the 1v3. I'm sure you're going to be seeing that all over the place because that was just absolutely insane. Either way, TMNT for life come away with a clean 2-0 victory over top of Kaz Esports. Both teams coming out of the relegation period. Kaz just not able to find the wins. We do have some game two replays, and I think I might know which one we're gonna see, Taco. Find a guess. I could I could take a guess and just the execution all around, like you said, the cojones on this man. He had no fear whatsoever, happily trading out his life for that 2v1 or 3v1. Bless up, dude. That was nuts. <laughs> The, the perfect timing is to jump over the Kraken as well. Welsh Beast just playing aggressive all game long. It's exactly what we expected out of him. You called it out in game one. That's how he likes to play. And it works out so far for TMNT for life. They start off their spring split of the European SEL with a 2-0 victory. 
but we're not done yet with the European SCL. We're going to see the two teams that didn't have to go through relegations, Cyclone and Team Rival. It's going to be up next right after the short break.